Now that I've got this thing set up, uh, I've got it started. Um, I've it set. I set it at 128 degrees, only because that's where it was set. And I've got this 3,500 watt heater heating this up. Uh, right now it's measuring 71. And you can see how this is starting. You can start seeing the steam uh, build up in the bottom of this column. And that, what that's telling me is that we've got some vapors that are starting to rise, and they're condensing immediately when they hit this cold column. So we're going to let that run for a while until uh, we bring it up to temperature. We're going to balance the column with the kettle through the PID, uh, and then we're going to start the water flow. I got a lot more to do uh, about getting this water thing hooked up, uh, it, it's, but it's going to be fun. But we had a few challenges. Our first major challenge was this joint here was leaking, so I had to, I wound up just taking it apart and redoing it. Okay, so um, yeah, I had to get more of that shrink wrap above um, that joint. So that's working well. And you can see now it's dripping, and uh, we're doing rather well. Uh, I've already taken off the four shots. And that's the first two ounces uh, in five gallons. And I don't care what you're making. If you're making a sugar wash, if you're making a grain, if you're making a fruit, just throw away the first two ounces, please. And the only reason we do that is because we can. Remember, beer, wine, and mash are all made exactly the same way. You ferment. Uh, and, but after beer and wine, what do they do? They clarify and bottle. But with a mash, uh, we put it in a still and separate. Well, your, your methanol is there in all three of them. Uh, the only reason we separate is because we can. Remember, we've got that. There's a video about uh, the truth about methanol. Uh, you're not going to produce enough to hurt anybody or to hurt yourself. Just don't collect it in shot glasses and drink it straight. It's not a good idea. It's concentrated at that point. But in beer and wine, it's smeared out all across the whole batch. So it's an infinitesimal amount that it doesn't hurt anybody. Okay. Well, as a matter of fact, it's thought that that's what really gives you the headache. Uh, people will tell you if you drink a good moonshine, you'll never have a headache the next morning. It's because we separated. Okay. So we've done that. Uh, now, if I watch this column, and this is what I wanted to show you, you, you can see now that there's no, there's no steam in there any longer. It's just there's liquid, and there's liquid that travels up, and it gets to the top, and it's condensing a little bit and dropping back down, and it's doing its thing, but it's doing it in a natural fashion. So what I'm going to, what I'll collect out of here is right now is probably, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 130, 140 proof which is perfectly okay if we were going to run it as a pot still, but we're not. We're going to run it as a reflux column. And when we get that reflux action going really good, we're going to do a close-up and show you what it looks like. But this is what it looks like in the column right now, which is nothing more than just looks like a bunch of sweat dropping and rolling right back down. And, of course, you got the vapor going up the center. Now, um, I am at 149 degrees. I got it set for 158. I'm going to... I'm going to I'm going to bump the temperature up, and then as I, right before I bump the temperature up, though, I'm going to turn on my control, my pump that controls the water flow through that reflux chamber. And that's nothing more than three copper pipes that run through the, so that it gives it a place to pre-condense. I'm going to turn that on, I'm going to adjust the water flow, and I'm going to show you that, and then uh, I'm going to turn the temperature up. Don't go far. Okay, you can see here how little is coming through there. And in my opinion, just to start with, that's probably a little bit too much. So I'm gonna turn that down. Yeah, that water flows just a little bit too fast for me. So here's my needle valve. And There we go. See, now you understand when I say that it only takes a trickle of water running through your reflux chamber. Now, that's what we're going to start with. And um, once we get it going, we're going to make adjustments. 
Okay, we are now at 175 degrees at my head temperature. And this is what I wanted you to see. You can see the drips dripping off of those cross tubes. Now, and those drips are dripping back down. And they're landing. Right there on top of those glass beads. And they're rolling back down the column. And then they're revaporizing and rising back up. So this is the beginning of our reflux action. Let's see if we can increase that reflux just a little bit. Now, I'm not sure if you can tell the difference. I can. Um, I can get a better view of it from the side here. And see, now that you have that side view, you can see, see those drops that are dripping back down. You can see that they've increased quite dramatically. And um, so I, I've got a really good reflux going on. And I've still got product running out the end of my condenser. So I'm pre-condensing. And then whatever makes it past the pre-condenser, we condense. Now that we've got this thing set, uh, my, my column is balanced. I can see... A lot of activity which I think is pretty neat because otherwise you just have to kind of visualize it in your own mind but now that we've got this column that's completely see-through we can actually see what's going on and it really it opens up the world in understanding uh, which is the purpose behind this demonstration and so much of what we do here um, I've got this set at 175, I'm at 174.6, 0 0.7, and so my PID is working and keeping it balanced, my water flow is operating, um, and the difference between these temperatures here, uh, these, I got like 0.3 degree difference, my 0.3 degree difference is, is attributed to two things, one is uh, my PID working and sensing temperature and doing predictions and, and going through its algorithm, and the second thing is is that I've got that reflux operating, so I've got cold water going through there. So the heat that rises is also cooling when it gets up there, so it takes a little bit more energy, just a little bit, um, to make sure that that is the proper temperature. So what do I do now? Uh, well, n now that I've got it set and it's running, everything looks like it's going well, I'm just going to, and it's my output is... It's just a constant drip, 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 drip. I don't have my spurt yet. I, I could, I guess, turn it up a little bit, but you know, I'm kind of happy with it like this. I'm gonna leave it run. I'm, all I got to do now is sit back, and the temperatures balanced, the water flows balanced, my condenser's working. Every once in a while, I need to check the temperature, which is now 53 degrees, in my cooler. Uh, and if that gets up to about 60, I'll turn the air conditioner back on. I've got time now to clean up the shop. Okay, I guess it's a little bit of quiz time. Um, we, it's been running now for oh, 20 or 30 minutes, and my parrot's full, and I'm floating my hydrometer. Uh, this is the proof and trail hydrometer. And if you'll notice here, it's floating at around 170, oh, about 174 proof. Uh, so, here's my question. Uh, why isn't it producing 180 proof yet, or 190? What is what, what can we do? Um, we can do a couple different things, but what is the most direct? What is the effect of what we have running in the background, as opposed to what our results are right here at our parent? Well, the reason why we're at 172 ish, 174ish proof. Um, is because of the reflux. So remember, those vapors are rising, pre-condensing, the water separating, and the most volatile substance being the ethanol is continuing to pass. Um, if we're only at 170 proof, uh, what that means to me is that we have a little bit more water passing through than just pure ethanol. So how do we correct that? Think about that. Yeah, we, 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 if we increase the reflux action by increasing the water flow, well then, a little bit more of that water is going to be stripped. But remember, there is a point of no return. What happens if we have too much water? 
Yeah, you're right. Yeah, too much water, and then we have full condensing in the column, and we have no output. Hmm. So you see, we got that delicate balance, and we're going to make that. Well, I'm going to do that now. So uh, you can just sit back and enjoy the show because uh, we got a little bit of balancing to do, and all I've got to do now is turn over here and increase the water flow ever so slightly. There we go. That will increase the reflux action. It'll slow down my drips, but it'll only slow them down for a period of time. Because when I increase that reflux flow, of course the head temperature is going to drop a little bit, but my PID is going to pick that up and increase the energy and increase the volume or the, the vapors. It's a perfect balancing act. We shall return. Uh, we're back, and we're just about at the end of this. Well, not really at the end of the run yet, but uh, it's, what I wanted to do is take it one step further. I've got two jars. Um, uh, the first one was, remember, was 170. We made our adjustment. We're now at 180 proof. So I've got two jars. Make some great hand sanitizer with this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now we've done that. So what I figured I'd do was on the very last one, as I shut off the reflux chamber all together and I did that just about two minutes ago and so you'll see what happens immediately is you'll see that you can see all the vapors collecting up in here and starting to run out and they're going to run out of my condenser now why why does this all of a sudden start to show like it's sweating and is getting vapored well because there's no pre-condensing happening at the top so there's nothing dropping any longer everything now is just rising and making its way through the condenser and it's going to come out and see now it's starting to come out it's start to come out the condenser uh, right now I've got it set at 185 degrees and it's hovering right there about it's 185.1 185.1 with my PID controller uh, I'm gonna let that run for a little while and we'll see I've left the proof and trail hydrometer in my parrot uh, we're now at 160 proof it's starting to again What's it, what is it going to do now? Well, it should start to produce a little bit faster, but my proof is going to drop dramatically. And why is that? Well, that's because uh, I've got this, these vapors rising, and along with those vapors is a good portion of water. And because remember, I'm using quite a bit of energy here at this point, uh, and I'm using quite a bit of energy because the volume in the kettle has changed dramatically. Okay, I've already taken two quarts of almost pure ethanol out, which means I've got maybe another half to a three quarters of a quart in here. And in order to get that out, I've got to use a little bit more energy because those bonds become a little bit more difficult to break apart when the volume of ethanol and water become a little bit more unstable. Eh, not unstable, but your volume of water is more, a lot more than your volume of ethanol. Okay, so it takes a little bit more energy to separate those. Uh, now, I'll stop. Uh, when I get down, I'll, I'm, I'm going to let that run. Usually, how far do I usually run it? it you've got to know this from all the other videos. I'll usually run up to 204 degrees and 100 proof, and that's in a pot still. And the reason I do that is because it's not impossible but difficult if you're running correctly to draw tails below 100 proof. Now you can go down to 90 if you want, but I stop at 100 because to me that's my safe zone. Uh, you can draw tails out of a still at any time. Uh, if you're running it too fast, at too hot of, high of a temperature, uh, and you're not trying to run it correctly. Uh, if you're trying to be a little bit too rambunctious uh, and run it really, really fast, you can get tails at the very beginning of your run because what are you doing? You're, you're actually boiling and you're using a lot of energy and it's pushing all of that stuff out and you don't want to do that so I'll let this run and we'll see what we collect from the last jar um, probably no need for us to get back together again I mean that that kind of brings us to the end of this run I uh, hope you have questions or comments uh, please again share us with your friends um, oh and happy distilling <laughs>